Great news for foldable fans everywhere. Samsung has just unveiled, officially, the Galaxy Z Fold 4. This is arguably the most popular foldable phone, at least here in America. And it's nice to see Samsung introduce a new generation that might take things further. At first glance, it seems like most of the changes coming to the Galaxy Z Fold 4 are just refinements, but it feels, at least based on my limited hands-on with a demo unit, the Z Fold 4 is improving in a way that makes it more polished than ever before. The big theme of Galaxy Unpacked, at least this second half of 2022, seems to be just making things sleeker, thinner, lighter. And the same is happening with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Samsung says this thing is more portable just because it is thinner and sleeker. In spite of that, it still manages to have a screen, a main screen on the inside with a wider aspect ratio that makes it just easier for reviewing things like books or movies. That wider aspect ratio also makes the Galaxy Z Fold 4 a lot more intuitive as a candy bar format phone when it is folded. You no longer have to deal with a phone that just feels a little bit too long and narrow. And now, the even though it's a very slight change in footprint, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 as a one-screen phone actually feels closer to regular than before. And although I couldn't really tell the difference despite holding the Z Fold 4 and the Z Fold 3 side by side, Samsung says the new device is actually about 8 grams lighter. The company also says this is more durable than before, with its main screen having a 45% stronger panel. So when you open up the Galaxy Z Fold 4, you'll once again see a 7.6 inch screen that this time runs at 2176 by 1812. It's got slimmer bezels, like Samsung said, but honestly, I couldn't tell the difference until I was really nitpicking and maybe the bottom bezel seemed a little bit thinner. Samsung says the screen has been optimized for streaming and games, but given the Wi-Fi wasn't really designed to handle this at our hands-on event, we couldn't really test this to verify the claim. We did check to see if the under-display camera on the Z Fold 4 is better camouflaged as Samsung said it is compared to the Z Fold 3. For now, I can tell you that when we were watching a video on YouTube on the Z Fold 4, the under-display camera didn't really feel like it got in the way. Aside from the hardware, Samsung's also tweaked many parts of the software of the Galaxy Z Fold 4, and the most important of these is the taskbar. It's been relocated from the right side where previously known as the edge bar, apps would be hanging out in a floating panel on either the left or right side. Now, Samsung's moved this to the bottom of the screen. It's a little tricky because it doesn't appear when you're just hanging out on the Android home screen, but once you launch an app, you'll see this tiny little row of app icons show up. You'll see your most frequently used apps there, as well as your most recently used apps, and then you can drag and drop app icons from there to launch them on different portions of the display. There's also shortcuts to all apps, as well as the traditional Android navigation style buttons that show you all open apps, going home and going back. With this, you can now run up to three apps at once, side by side, and configure them how you want. And also, Samsung's been working with developers to encourage them to develop their apps and make full use or better use of this screen. And just like it did on the Galaxy Z Flip 4, Samsung's made changes to flex mode here, specifically introducing a new touchpad mode. If you recall, flex mode was when Samsung would divide the screen in half and let you use the bottom portion with specific tools like a brightness slider or a volume adjustment slider. Now it's added that touchpad mode, which basically converts that bottom half off the screen into a trackpad. So you can use it to control a cursor on the top half of the screen like you would on a laptop, for example. While I found this quite intuitive on the Galaxy Z Flip 4 because I enjoyed using that phone in one hand, this just didn't seem that practical on the Z Fold 4. Wouldn't it be easier to just reach a little further and click the link you're trying to hit? Maybe there's some kind of use case that I'm missing here, but for now, touchpad mode and flex mode on the Galaxy Z Fold 4 just doesn't seem as useful as it does on the Z Flip 4 just yet. Because it is the flagship level foldable for Samsung, the Z Fold 4 also features flagship level cameras. Samsung says it's brought over the camera system from the S series over to the Z Fold 4, meaning you can get a triple camera system and up to 30 times so-called space zoom. 
This is a combination of a three times optical zoom as well as the rest being made up with digital zoom. In terms of the hardware here, we've got a 50 megapixel wide primary camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, as well as a 10 megapixel telephoto sensor. Like the Z Flip 3, this features what Samsung calls nightography, which is basically enhanced shooting in low light. And here at our well-lit demo event, it was hard to find a spot to shoot any real low light pictures, but we did try to shoot a corner that was a little more dim than the rest of the areas and pictures did seem to come out well. The Z Fold 4 also has a significantly larger battery than the Z Flip 4. You've got a 4400 milliamp hour cell here, as well as support for fast wireless charging and fast charging, getting you up to 50% in 30 minutes of plugging in. You can also use wireless power share here to use the Z Fold 4 and charge your Galaxy Watch or Galaxy Buds. Finally, just like its predecessor, the Galaxy Z Fold 4's main screen is compatible with the S Pen, whether it's the Pro Edition or the Fold Edition. I'm a little disappointed by the color options the Z Fold 4 uh, offers. You've got black, you've got gray, green, and then you've got this beige color that's kind of meh. Still, they're all going to be available come August 26, or you can pre-order them now for a starting price of $1,800. If you're kind of on the fence and not sure if you want to buy it just yet, stay tuned for our full review so we'll be able to test things like real-world performance, battery life, and more. For that and for more from the world of consumer technology, make sure you subscribe to Engadget.